Okay, so a major difference between running JavaScript in the browser and running JavaScript in the Node environment is that in the Node environment, you have access to the file system. You can write files, you can read files and manipulate files. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can do that with some simple examples. So the good thing is that if you have Node installed on your system already, you don't have to install anything separately. The FS module is a core module in Node. So to start using it, you call require and the name of the module is FS. And it's common practice to save the object that this returns in a variable called FS. Now what we have is access to the file system via methods available on this FS object saved in this variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is to write the file to the system in the folder where app.js is, so it will appear in this left-hand pane when it exists. So the method you need for this on the FS object is write file. Now to specify what you're going to write, you need to pass in some arguments. The first one is the name of the file. So I'm going to call this data.text. The second is the data that the file should contain. So I'm going to create some string data here. Now third, you can specify some options, the most important of which is the file encoding. Now, if you don't specify any encoding, it's going to be encoded in standard UTF-8 format. When writing a text file, this is standard encoding. So I'm going to skip specifying anything for the encoding specifically. And to finish, what I need to do is to write a function here, a callback function that is going to fire when the text has been written to the system. And what I have available to me in this function is an error object. So I can use that for result handling. And the standard way is like this. You check to see if there's anything in the error object. If there is, it means there was a problem writing to the system. So in this case, you'll probably want to throw an error. And I'm going to pass into there the error object that exists. Now, if there was no error, then the if statement won't run. Instead, what you want to do is to log a message to the console with the information that the file was written successfully. So just to review, if there is an error, then this if statement is going to run and it throws an explicit error. So that stops any more code inside this function being executed, which means that nothing will be logged to the console. If there is no error, then this if statement is skipped and this message is logged to the console. So this is the standard pattern that you would be working with when using other methods on the FS object as well. But before continuing, let's check that this script actually writes a file inside this FS module folder. So here in the terminal, I'm going to run node at JS and you should see a file appear here in the folder when I run this script. So let's see. Okay, so data.txt now exists and it contains the text created in Node.js. And if I open the terminal, you see that this written successfully message is being printed there. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to read a file that exists on the system using the example of the text file that I've just written. So the method you need here is fs.readfile. Now, if you want to read a file that's in a subfolder, you use this syntax here, forward slash the subfolder, forward slash the file. Here, it's in the same directory as app.js. So all I need to do is specify the file name. So that's data.txt. Next, you should specify the encoding of the file, which in this case is UTF-8. Now, if you don't specify the encoding, what will happen is it will return a buffer to you, which you can read from by applying the toString method to it. So I'm specifying the encoding explicitly here. So what I get back is not a buffer that I then have to convert, but the actual contents of the file. And as before, finally, I'm writing a callback function that will fire when the data has been read. And I have again available to me the error. I also have available to me this time the data that I'm reading. So I'm going to want to check as before, is there any content inside this error here? So I'm going to actually just copy the if statement that I wrote before, because that's also the way that I would handle this. 
checking whether there's any content in the error. If there is throwing an explicit error that will stop the execution of this function. Now this time, instead of just logging a message to the console, I'm going to log the contents of the file that I've just read, and that's available to me in this data variable. Now I'll run this code again, and let's see if it works. So save the file, and again, I'll call node app.js in the console, and this time I get the message file written successfully, and then created in node.js as the second console log. Now you'll notice that there was no problem in writing a file with the same name to the system again. So if you use fs write file and you write to a file name that already exists, it will just overwrite the existing file. So this is the standard way of interacting with the file system. You use the asynchronous methods available on the fs object, and then you run a call back when a process is complete. So you may notice a problem that you can run into. What if write file takes some time to complete and read file executes in the meantime, well, read file will have nothing to read. So you would want to make sure that read file only executes when the write file process is complete. So there are two ways that you can solve this using the file system module. The first one is to nest read file inside of write file inside the callback function in write file so that read file only executes when the callback fires and the callback is only firing when write file is complete. So this is one option that you have. Let's run the code. You see that the file was written successfully. If I delete the file here and run it again, you see that everything's working fine. But you can see here with this nesting that we can easily end up with messy code. So something that you can do instead is to use a slightly different method for write file, for writing the file to the system, and that would be write file sync. So most methods available on the file system module, you can make them run synchronously by adding sync afterwards. So I could add sync to the end of read file, but it wouldn't make much sense in this context because nothing is occurring after read file. So I'm going to delete that and just leave it on write file. So this can be of advantage sometimes, but be aware that it's going to block the rest of your script until it is complete, which can sometimes be an unwanted behavior. Now, if you're using a sync method like write file sync, you need a different code structure because now there is no callback. So I'm going to delete this entire third argument which was a callback when I was using the asynchronous method. Now we need to handle the result. So the way that you do this with a synchronous method is in try catch syntax. So try for what you're trying to do and catch is going to catch the error. So if there's an error, the catch statement is going to be executed and I can log that error to the console. And in the try statement, that's where I try to write the file, and if it's successful, a message is going to be written to the console, file written successfully. Okay, so that's how you would structure your code to handle writing a file to the system synchronously. So now finally, I'm going to show you how to restructure read file to read file sync. The reason I'm going to show you this, even though there's no code waiting down below, is that it's structured slightly differently read file sync because it's reading a file will now return a value. So again, I'm going to create try and catch statements. The catch has an error available and I'm going to log that to the console if there is one. Now in the try statement, I'm going to read the file. There's no callback this time. So how is the data available to me? Well, I save that in a variable called data, so read file sync is returning the data to me, and then I can log the contents of that data, and that will now show up in the terminal when I run this script. So I'm going to delete the code from previously, and let's see if this works. Should work the same way as before, and I'll just test it without this file here as well, just to make sure it is working properly. So that is it for this tutorial on accessing the file system with JavaScript in the Node environment. If you found this tutorial useful, 
please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel.